Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for another Broker Talk. We are blessed today to have a guest who has, with her marketing brilliant savvy, built and helped international businesses create their brand. Because Marketing Matters is the tagline and part of the Mavens and Moguls brand statement, and Paige Arnoff Fend, my friend, is our guest today. Welcome, Paige. Thanks so much for having me, Larry. I'm so excited to chat with you. Well, it, it's it, we first met back in the early 2000s when I attended an MIT meeting, meeting of the IEEE, where you were a panelist discussing the differences between a board of directors and a board of advisors. I was at a point where I was looking for um, someone to help because I'm an entrepreneur and, and you get tired of just listening to your to yourself. <laughs> you, you don't always tell yourself the truth. <laughs> At that time, I was a small marketing company helping build the brands of and the market share of the companies I work with. I learned that I did not need a board of directors to help me. I needed a board of advisors who could guide me. The question I had while sitting there listening to the panel um, was how could I attract a high level advisor? Paige from the podium said, just ask them. And so <laughs> at the meeting, that's exactly what I did. And that was the beginning of our 20 plus year relationship that has been so beneficial to me during those ensuing years. I've watched you help so many other people, in particular women entrepreneurs. I'm, I'm uh, blessed and, and thankful to be part of your life page. Your I success- feel exactly the same way, Larry. Well, thank you. Your successes in this industry is unparalleled, both a Stanford and a Harvard business school grad. You have gone on to be on the board, the boards of many companies and worked for so many international brands like Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble. You say you love building great brands, and I know that's true. You've been the first VP marketing of CMO Zipcar. Now that's Avis. VP of marketing of Inc.com. That was sold to Bartlesman and the first SVP of marketing at Launch Media, which was sold to Yahoo. Hey, would you like to own me? You know, be my money? Anyway, the accolades are so massive. We don't have time to share all of them in the show right now. I thought it was best to start by asking the important question of what is brand and why is it important? So... A brand is what helps you be visible in an increasingly invisible world. We are all bombarded with thousands of messages every day. And if you want to stand out from your competition, you need to own some real estate in your customer's brain so that when they have a problem that you can help them solve, that they think of you first. That is brand. Um, a brand is a promise that you're making to your customers or clients that they're gonna have a consistent experience. Every time they interact with you, they know who's gonna show up. They know what that experience is gonna look like. I mean, could you imagine walking into a McDonald's or a Starbucks and if they all had a different menu or a different offering or different furniture, you'd be completely confused, but that's not the way it works. Whether you're in Tokyo, New York City, Toronto, Dallas, Texas, it doesn't matter. If you're at Starbucks or you're at McDonald's, you probably have a very good sense of what's on the menu, what you like. Maybe there's like one new uh, menu item in Asia that they don't offer here, yeah. but the overall experience is going to be consistent. And that's why branding is important. Uh, and I agree completely with that. Some of those states, you can carry a gun on your hip, but, but most of the time walking into a McDonald's is a safe environment, uh, <laughs> depending on whether you eat that kind of food or not. <laughs> but yeah, That's between you and your cardiologist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what you're saying is your brand represents you and so you your person your business so how does that manifest itself and you know I show up in my office today and and I have people that I have to call and things that I have to do um what do, what does that all involved on a daily basis so the thing that I would want your listeners 
to know is that everything communicates how you look, what you drive, how you like hold yourself, your vocabulary, your business card, your stationery, everything communicates. If you have a signature at the bottom of your email, if you have on hold music on your phone while people are waiting, everything carries a, a part of the DNA of your brand. So it's really important that you're telling a consistent story. And I think a lot of people, their initial reaction is, I'm not famous. I'm not really a brand. I'm not Beyonce or Taylor Swift. I'm not Tom Brady or LeBron James. I'm not a politician. Like, I'm not really a brand. And I hope by the time you and I finish chatting today, people will understand that today everybody's a brand. And I think if we learned anything during the pandemic these past three and a half or so years, it's that you don't exist today if people can't find you online. I think we learned that um, in this virtual hybrid world that we live in, um, before people return your phone call, meet you for coffee, want to break bread with you, what do they do? They go to Google and they check you out. And if you don't clean up well, they may not call you back. They may not want to have a meeting with you. So you have to kind of plant seeds and you want those seeds to sprout in a consistent way. And, um, everybody's a brand today. I just can't, can't say that enough. And you have to realize that you got to, you got to clean up well online. And however, you know, we're all, we all have a megaphone with the internet and social media. You don't have to be a, you know, Pulitzer prize winning journalist to have a voice online. You know, people are out there uh, publishing content, tweeting or Xing or whatever they call it, you know, posting status updates on LinkedIn, on Facebook. And you've got to show a consistent front because you can't be one kind of person on one platform and a different kind of person on another platform. That just doesn't exude uh, trust. I think it's confusing and people don't know which version version of you is going to show up for the meeting or the phone call or the podcast. Right. So you want, you know, LinkedIn is a professional uh, network. So you want to show up in a very positive professional way. Facebook uh, can be a lot more casual, but if your profile is public and people are seeing you doing crazy stuff, you can't uncouple that from other images of you that are going to be found online. Yeah. So I would just encourage your listeners to really think about what kind of brand they're trying to build and make sure that everything they do kind of is a ripple effect of that, those core values and that brand that you, you want to build it from the inside out and live it every single day. That's that is the 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 magic kind of potion, if you will. Right, right. I I think of um, you mentioned Starbucks or or McDonald's. You you're walking in, you're walking out. Somebody's coming in. You hold the the door for someone, and whether they say thank you or not, you know you did the right thing, and you can feel good uh, good about that because you are exuding what and who you are. In real estate, so many so many agents believe that they are the brand of the company that they're with. So many agents move from one brand to another. So your brand is you not your company and Absolutely. you exude yourself facebook twitter well now instagram is even more popular than that and tiktok is even more popular than 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 those two and um you have to be consistent across the board absolutely and i just think it's really important to differentiate yourself 
um, among other real estate people online. You know, we've worked with a lot of professional service businesses, money managers, wealth managers, real estate people. And, you know, a lot of people think, you know, we're all the same. We all do the same thing. But that's just not true. I think you have to think about what niche is is really talking to your authentic brand. Where is your sweet spot? Um, we've worked with financial uh, folks, wealth managers who specialize. Um, we have one uh, client we've worked with and her sweet spot is women that, that come into kind of high high net worth uh, activities. So they either got divorced, they either got a big inheritance or they maybe they were running a company that went public or got sold. So they found themselves with a windfall of new wealth and she kind of cornered that market. So any woman that was a, a friend or a neighbor or a colleague that you knew that was going through a divorce, that's, you know, just found out her company was going to go public, anything like that. It seemed like everyone was recommending to her, you know, if you don't know Susie, you should, you know, you should check her out. I hear she does great things for people like you. Have you heard of Susie? Have you talked to Susie? And it seemed like all the stars aligned um, because uh, the name just kept popping up, kept popping up, kept popping up. And that's not an accident. She basically, um, she ended up, again, kind of cornering that market because all the people uh, were doing her marketing for her. So how do you think these women uh, feel when, you know, unsolicited, uh, all these people come up with, you know, you really got to call this woman because I hear she's great. I know people that have hired her and they just rave about her. You can call my friend. She'll tell you. I know her number. That That is like the best kind of marketing there is. Um, that is like when word of mouth really catches hold. And when that happens, you know, those clients are not looking at your competition. They, you've already got them. They, they basically pre-sold themselves to hire you. They know before they even pick up the phone or send you an email that you're probably the needle in the haystack for them that's when your brand is like magic. If you can make that happen, you've got a line out the door for your kind of customers. I'm I'm pretty sure, Paige, that you, you said this to me many years ago because it's stuck. Um, but first, let me say wide net versus narrow focus. Susie is a narrow focus. She found what she did and started to do it. And I'm more of a narrow focus. I don't want to work with everyone. But i believe that you told me that the difference between advertising, public relations, and brand marketing is advertising is you say you're a good date, public relations is your mom says you're a good date, and brand marketing is when your date says you're a good date. <laughs> and that's what you're that's talking still, about. That's still true, Larry. It's still absolutely true. And so wide net or narrow focus is another decision that starts. And my personal feeling is, I think at the beginning, you should be wide net and pay attention to what you're catching and then begin to focus and focus and focus. Um, there are people I work very well with. I like the George sighting. <laughs> it's, it's great. <laughs> How do you get George on his knees? Have a podcast. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, it's good to see him up and around, though. <laughs> uh, so back to wide net and narrow focus. As you're building your brand, is there a, a switch that you have to turn on or turn off, or do you just pay attention to what you're getting? I think... You know, I think it, branding works best when you live it every day. Yeah. So you don't have to think about turning it on or turning it off. It just is. And if it if it's one of those things where, you know, you just it it becomes 
part of your routine. You don't even have to think about it. I think it's part of the reason why Steve Jobs like wearing a uniform, you know, the jeans and the black turtleneck. That was part of his brand. He didn't even have to think about it. Right. Um, I, th I think anything you can do that streamlines and simplifies your process um, that makes makes it just natural. It just right. seems like it's the air you breathe. It's the water you drink. That's when the brand is really working because it's like, it seems as if all the stars are aligning. Right. Um, you know, that that is really magic. When that happens, you know, you've arrived. Right. And you don't always know it until you've already arrived. And then you, all of a sudden you say, oh, wait a minute, this is a little bit easier. Um, and it does become easier if you pay attention. Being an entrepreneur, being self-employed, um, it's a daily thing. I mean, um, people ask me if I want to go to Vegas, if I want to bet on a game or something. I say, I'm self-employed. You know, every day is a gamble. So and it's true with most agents. You know, they they wake up and and they'll listen to what what um, it comes across their uh, Internet like, hey, do this and you'll you'll do, you know, once I got this program, I sold 7000 houses, you know, in the first week. It, you know, it's like, I don't know if that's true. And I think it's important um, that you really pay attention to what you're listening to. Yeah, and I I don't think there are any silver bullets. I don't think there's any, I, I just don't believe that there are any like overnight sensations. I don't think that's the way things work. If you look in any field, the Oscars, the Emmys, the Golden Globes. Uh, the Olympics. The Grammys, yeah, the Olympics. These people don't like show up and run their first race and win a gold medal. You don't, you know, launch your first song uh, on YouTube and win a Grammy award. That's just not the way it works. Right. You build, you build your brand, you build your following, you know, you, you're, con you consistently show up every day and give great performances and, you know, build your following on social media and, you know, keep showing up and keep over delivering and keep re reinforcing your core values and your core messages and then they start to sink in after after a time right and anything worth doing i think is worth doing really well mm -hmm. and if you turn that into a habit if you you know if it becomes just a natural extension of who you are what you do how you look how you think how you behave again that that's when you become the brand, right. you know, you are a living, walking, breathing example of the brand that you want to embody. And like I said, it's kind of like everything communicates. If somebody runs into you on the soccer field at one of their kids games or in the grocery store buying milk or ice cream, how do you look if you are mostly professionally really you know, buttoned up and look great. And, you know, it doesn't mean you need to show up on the soccer field in a suit and tie with your briefcase, but you do want to look appropriately kind of dressed. And, you know, in, in overseas, they'll say like smart casual. That's kind of the way, you know, you want to show people whether you're at work or at play, you have uh, standards, you have an image that you want to live up to. And so people know, again, no matter when they see you, when you cross paths, that you're going to you're going to show up um, in a way that is consistent with the brand that you've built. And I think that that's when it really works. Um, I, I say uh, I listen for a living. And people who know me know I'm deaf in one ear. So one of my friends said, well, Larry, you really have listened for a living. <laughs> but um, uh, I do listen. And, and I had an example of that 
last week, I was uh, looking at property in Dorchester, Massachusetts, right outside part of Boston. And I'm walking down the street after uh, I'd looked at the property going back and some woman stopped me and she said, I need a lawyer. Can you talk to me? And I said, I'm not a lawyer, but what's what's up? And she had so I, I stopped and listened to her and she had a problem with her landlord and I actually knew the answer. Um, to it. I think, it, and that that's an example of what you're saying. Be who you Absolutely. are, no matter what happens. Absolutely. And because of that experience, you know, I would not be surprised if, you know, she asked for your card and she said, thank you so much for letting me know. And, you know, even though you're not an attorney, but, you know, you know, real estate, you know your business, you're close enough to the kind of issues and um, problems that she was having that you felt very confident that you could point her in the right direction. I am guessing whether it's next week, next month or next year, someone's going to contact you and say, I got your name from this woman who met you and it's going to be the lady in Dorchester. And she said, you were incredibly helpful. And I'm just wondering if you could help me too, or I know someone who's looking for help and I wonder if you could help them find the right person that I, I really believe the more that you give, the more that you get back. Yeah. And when you plant those seeds and you live your brand every day, you're naturally very helpful person. You're professional, you know, you, you are a giver. And I think that comes through in everything that you do. And it will come back. It will probably come back in spades. So that story doesn't surprise me in the least. And it is very much on brand for who you are. Um, I, I appreciate that. But we've but we've been in, in the same fan club with each other for many years. Um, but that's because we're consistent. Uh, I want to give a shout out uh, to you, the first woman elected president of uh, the Sports Museum. Uh, you know, the old boy network. Uh, well, it's, I was the chair of the board of trustees. And, and you know, you're, uh, you love sports, in particular basketball. Uh, I do. I'm a big Celtics fan here in Boston. Yeah, yeah. And we look good this year. So, we do. yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, brand, uh, brand markers, like your clothes and your statements and your website and your marketing pieces, um, how you treat your clients and colleagues and colleagues is another one it, because in the real estate business, uh, people, we have to make hundreds of calls like anybody in, a, in this kind of an industry of stockbrokers and all of that. How you treat people on the phone and how professional you are makes a huge difference. Like Without a doubt. The, the, it's so important because again, it's everything around you touches on your brand. Yeah. And I know real estate people who have regular newsletters, like many professional service firms. And a lot of times they're telling you about the open house or they're, you know, they're giving you tips for staging your house or whatever. But a lot of times they're telling you about a community nonprofit they support, or they're just giving you very helpful advice that actually has nothing to do with their business, yet it has everything to do with their business because they really care about the whole person. They want you to know that we know that you're not always buying or selling homes, but we know in your community, there's some really great things going on and we want to share this with you. Right. And when you, when you meet people that care about the whole person, Right. Not just, you know, they are in the relationship business. They're not in the transaction business. Right. That makes a huge difference. And that speaks volumes about your brand. Yeah. And I think you and I are both in that club as well. I mean, we collect people and good people kind of flock together. And I think when you're with people that are doing good work and care about their communities and care about their colleagues and their clients up and down the food chain, it really shows. And 
you know, it's one of the things that drives engagement. It drives connection and it, it speaks volumes when, you know, you're not just all business all the time. You're a human being too. And I think again, maybe a lesson from the pandemic, you know, we all saw each other in our homes um, in a way that was more intimate than we were used to. And you got to see people's family and hear their pets and see their children or their spouses or whatever. And it just made everybody a little more human and a little more vulnerable. And it made us all kind of feel more connected in a very disconnected time. Yes. And I think that, again, speaks volumes. The fact that people got through it feeling kind of closer, not not uh, more disengaged says a lot. And I think anything you can do to stay connected to the audiences that you care about in a way that's relevant to them. And you, you have this in your signature. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's like, how can we help you? Right. you know, and I think if more people have that attitude, the world just works a lot better. What, what's interesting that the signature you speak of it's all about you and then it's it and i've had that for many 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 years and it's interesting i've only had three or four people ever come have an issue with it and it's always someone i ended up oh i don't want to work with them no i was gonna it says more about them than you it's like that's, oh, that that probably tells you they are not a good fit for your brand uh, and and exactly and i learned that back then when that happens you know if you're you're attacking oh you're saying it's all about me it's not about me you're you know and and then i say thank you very much but then you then you become more narrow focused and i think that's really important let's talk about um uh, the younger consumers now, because the, the uh, late twenties, early thirties, they're coming back into the market and they're they're beginning to buy. But these people, they grew up like this, right? You know? They're di digital natives, and like you said, if you're not on TikTok or Instagram, you may not be reaching them at all. And I want to make a further a further point about that is if you like, I would rather talk to somebody than text them. Uh, I've had that with my son who's, you know, and they don't want that. You know, he won't pick up the phone and talk to somebody. <laughs> he wants you. And it's not just him. Uh, it's that whole generation. Absolutely. You have to meet people where they are. And if, it, if that is your target audience, you need to meet them where they want to chat, where it's helpful for them. It's not about you. It's about yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, again, narrow focusing um, when someone wants to talk to me only on WhatsApp, you know, um, I have found that that is usually because it's an, un, it's an encrypted thing. They're just going to be wasting your time and never get anything done. And I tell them right up front. And if they don't want to actually have a zoom call with me so I can see them, they can see me. I know immediately, listen, that I'm not going to waste any more time. Right. That's not a good customer for you. If that's if right. that's not your clientele, cut your losses. You don't need everybody to be your customer. You need the right people. Right. And, you know, your job is not to push and kind of force the issue. I think when there's a natural connection and there's a meeting of the minds and you have the same core values, those are great clients and customers. But right. if it, you have to force it, and again, there are patterns of behavior. If you deconstruct your five best clients from last year, how did they find you? You know, how, how did those breadcrumbs get planted? You know, those seeds. Um, and if you can replicate that, and scale that, you're probably going to build a very strong, healthy business and a great brand. But if you notice that the last five people that reached out to you on WhatsApp were just dead ends, then by all means, that is not a productive channel for you. Don't waste your time. Cut right. your losses and focus on you know the ones that are going to be better leads for you. 
Right. And and I'd like to say brand with boundaries. Yep. No exactly. within those lines. And and don't waste time outside exactly. your lines. Exactly. Uh, and uh, I realized that as I move towards retirement age, that I don't want to work with everybody. I want to work with people who want to work, want to get something done, and don't want any games. And and um, I think that's helpful for all agents to hear that. Don't Absolutely. be closing everybody. I mean, there was a whole thing where you can't be a, 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 a hidden agent, that you should every day tell everybody you're a real estate agent. Oh God, you know, <laughs> I I got this realtor pin, and the first place I wore it was in bed with my wife. <laughs> Take that off. I know what you do. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, Paige, we we could talk for hours. I, I know, but it's such an important topic, and I hope your listeners understand and realize. I had a professor in business school that used to say marketing is everything and everything is marketing. And I used to laugh, but it really is true. If people don't know about you, if they don't know what you stand for, if they don't know what you're good at, and you can't be good at everything, you can't be pick 10 things sure. that you want to stand for. No. Pick one, two, and no more than three. Absolutely. And put your stake in the ground and reinforce it in everything that you do so that when people need you, they think of you first. If you do that, you're going to build a solid practice. Thank you again. Paige Arnoff Fenn from Mavens and Moguls. I don't think we mentioned your company. Mavens and Moguls is an excellent brand company. Um, and thank you for watching and subscribing. I really appreciate it. Good to see you, Paige. Uh, Good to Larry. Tell Thank you that, so much. Tell George he can walk around him. Now he's free free to come and go. <laughs> Thanks again, Paige. Just uh, fantastic to talk to you as always. Always.